Hello, welcome again to another session of Digital Slide Review, Surgical Pathology. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Uh, our case today comes from the realm of uh, bone pathology um, and presents some interesting uh, differential considerations uh, for learning. Uh, the patient is a fairly young fellow, 17 years old, uh, who's been having some knee pain for some time and uh, seems to have developed an effusion that is reducing his range of motion, making it difficult uh, for him to uh, uh, run and engage in the normal activities that he enjoys. Uh, looking at the uh, radiograph, we can see that uh, we have a uh, somewhat uh, osteolytic lesion here with uh, areas of uh, peripheral sclerosis, uh, and it's located here in the epiphysis, uh, just distal to the, uh, oh, probably in the process of closing uh, epiphyseal plate. Uh, we can see that he's still slightly skeletally immature, uh, but uh, probably nearing that phase. Um, the margins, as I said, are very sharply defined, and uh, we see a little separation here in his joint, perhaps reflecting the uh, um, uh, effusion that he's experiencing. So uh, this raises consideration as to uh, how we evaluate, uh, and I'm speaking as the pathologist, how to evaluate uh, radiographs. Um, so, uh, of course, the foundational experience is based on plain film radiography, which I've just shown you. And the considerations there uh, that are helpful to the pathologist are identifying the location of the lesion. Uh, that's uh, probably one of the most important things, and we'll talk more about the differential according to location in a moment. Uh, the margins of the lesion are also important. Uh, this defines the rate of growth, uh, whether or not it's uh, permeative or whether it's sharply defined, been there a while, and perhaps uh, more likely to be a benign indolent uh, lesion. Uh, then looking at the internal structure, looking for calcifications, looking for scalloping of the cortex, looking for uh, little ring signs and so forth that can give you a clue as to the tissue type the, that you may be de dealing with. And finally, looking at the surrounding tissues, uh, is the uh, cortex uh, damaged, per, uh, permeated, or otherwise. Uh, newer mo uh, imaging modalities, CT and MRI, are also very helpful in identifying this relationship of the cortex, uh, and then give you additional information about the nature of the, uh, the uh, lesion relative to its content. Is it fluid? Is it fat? Is it bright? Is it dim? Um, and also, of course, uh, this helps uh, greatly with surgical intervention and planning biopsies and so forth, because it illustrates uh, what kind of planes you'll have to transgress uh, to get an appropriate biopsy of the lesion, um, and also then, of course, to uh, potentially resect it later on. Uh, one of the things that I like relative to location is this, uh, this sort of a diagram. There's several of them out there, this from uh, Dr. McGravy, uh, but I think nicely illustrates that uh, uh, in the epiphysis, or excuse me, in the uh, in diaphysis, no, excuse me, in the, in the epiphysis, uh, <laughs> yes, there it is, there's the word right there. Uh, there's really very few lesions that occur down here. So chondroblastoma is in our differential. Uh, occasionally, giant cell tumors will transgress the uh, epiphyseal plate and involve the epiphysis. Um, uh, enchondromas are usually uh, metaphyseal, osteochondromas, likewise, chondrosarcomas, and giant cell tumors. So the metaphysis is the busy zone. Uh, the epiphysis has a very limited differential. Um, and then, of course, uh, more proximal permeative lesions, the, the uh, diagnosis and the considerations change uh, as you begin to look at uh, other uh, tumors. Now, of course, other processes can involve the epiphysis, and those are important considerations as well. Uh, so it's not just tumors uh, that we're concerned about. Uh, so bone cysts can be in both locations. Uh, infection certainly can be in both locations, uh, and uh, those enter into the consideration as well. So let's uh, jump and take a look at uh, uh, what the slides look like for this patient. Here we see we got some nice uh, curatage material. Uh, we've got some variable uh, uh, pink areas and blue areas that uh, jump out at us. Uh, and so we'll go down and take a look at some of these and see uh, what the nature is of the tissue that we're dealing with. Uh, maybe this area right here might be of interest because it's sort of in between. 
Um, and as we look at this, we can see that this looks a little bit chondroid, um, as we would expect. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, peripheral cellular uh, uh, ring areas. Uh, we see some giant cells, but those are acceptable, uh, certainly. Uh, can be seen in either giant cell tumor or a chondroblastoma. Uh, and then we see these, these fairly bland uh, cells, uh, similarly in the more cellular areas as well as in the uh, chondroid areas. Uh, now, we did have this uh, area here that looks like it might be a little bit of necrosis. Uh, so that certainly uh, raises concern for possible uh, malignancy, but it could also be uh, uh, growth uh, rate, uh, other factors, trauma that have induced some measure of uh, necrosis uh, in this lesion. But this may be the cause uh, for the, the pain is the, the dying off of some of this tumor because uh, these are usually fairly indolent and slow growing type lesions. So here again, we see this contrast between the cellular uh, lesional tissue uh, can look a little bit concerning, uh, but no mitoses, no atypical mitoses. Um, and then this more chondroid uh, type matrix uh, here without evidence of osteoid formation and admixed uh, giant cells. So certainly the tissue that we have looks uh, consistent with uh, chondroblastoma. Uh, these clinically are usually young males, uh, and they often are painful. And as we've mentioned, they occur in the diaphysis. Uh, radiographically, the uh, differential diagnosis includes infection, uh, cystic lesions, uh, avascular necrosis, particularly if it's uh, up in the proximal femur, uh, as well as giant cell tumor and occasionally eosinophilic granuloma. Um, now, many times there's internal calcification um, and there may be some degree of periosteal reaction. Um, histologically, we see the giant cells that we've illustrated. Uh, this chicken wire matrix of calcification is a feature oftentimes described. Uh, we didn't see that in our particular case. Uh, usually no atypia and of course the chondroid matrix. Now what may lead to uh, um, a, a secondary change or things like that, um, uh, necrosis or hemorrhage can cause this sort of aneurysmal bone cyst type of appearance. Once we get the tumor histologically, well, usually the differential is between giant cell tumor and uh, chondral myxoid fibroma. Uh, we didn't see any of the myxoid uh, tissue um, that, uh, or, or particularly fibrotic uh, tissue that we would expect with that. Um, and once we identify the chondroid matrix, we can exclude the giant cell tumor usually pretty easily. So just to illustrate uh, this, here's another uh, example. Uh, this is uh, a case with uh, more of this uh, pink tissue, uh, but also illustrating some degree of this uh, calcification that we can see. Uh, so here we see this uh, sort of coarse uh, calcification. Again, very bland uh, tissue, very bland cells, uh, a little bit of chondroid matrix. And here we're beginning to see this uh, uh, peri uh, uh, membranous type of calcification uh, that gives this sort of a chicken wire appearance. Uh, here's a, uh, another higher magnification view uh, of this on a fixed photograph. Uh, and you can again see this uh, uh, type of calcification that uh, we see here uh, causing uh, that uh, chicken wire appearance. So our final sign-out diagnosis, not a difficult or challenging case particularly, but uh, chondroblastoma, typical location, typical age group, typical clinical presentation, and uh, fairly uh, representative uh, uh, histology as well. All of those things line up to help us make the diagnosis. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this program today. I hope you like that. Uh, if you've had other uh, observations about these chondroblastomas, uh, certainly, they typically are in long bone uh, type of lesions uh, with an epiphyseal plate. Uh, rarely in adults, they can present later in life uh, in uh, flat bones or even the skull. Um, so uh, don't uh, forget to consider that uh, with other lesions, but it's certainly far down the list. So again, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, until next time, uh, be good, uh, think soundly, and uh, Come back and join us again soon.